Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Renee and Joshua is my husband who is not here right now because he's in the army and he's in training in Virginia. Just kidding. <laughs> here he is. Hi. <laughs> How's the army treating you? Kind of. Not good because you got poured on this morning. <laughs> they heard you. They're freaking out. Oh my god. Say something. Hi. Her face. <laughs> she does not like that at all. Anyways, here's the rest of the story. So this video I'm going to talk about our son who was born at 23 weeks. If you haven't watched our last video, it's about my labor and delivery with him. So right now he is, well he's 30 weeks tomorrow. So I'm just going to tell you guys what happened on his first 7 weeks of life. Week one, the doctors kept telling us he was fine, he was stable, but before he was born, they gave him a 10% chance of survival, and I guess at 23 weeks, it's like the lowest chance they think a baby will survive. If he was 24 weeks, it would be a different story. They'd be telling us, oh, um, he'll be fine, he sh he'll be fine, he can make it, but because he was 23 weeks, they were telling us, no, he only has a 10% chance of survival and a 5% chance in a normal life. And that was really hard for like medical professionals to tell you that and to like hear them saying that was just really hard for us. But his first week of life, he was pretty stable. He was so tiny. Like, it was just so hard because he was just so tiny. You could see his ribs because of how small he was. He was only about one pound at birth. And you can see his ribs, and because their skin isn't done with, like, forming at that time, you can see through it, like, you can see all the blood vessels and stuff, and his chest was just so small, you can see his heart pumping. And, yeah, his first week, he was pretty okay. The doctors just kept saying he was as stable as he possibly could be. Of course, he was in critical condition because of his age, but he was okay. And then as the second week came, um, they told us he had a grade 2 bleed in his brain. And the doctors, the, one of the doctors was not optimistic about that at all. They told us that the next day he's going to have a grade 4. So we totally freaked out. Like a doctor telling you it's going to go from a grade 2 to grade 4 within one day. And he told us that we have to make a decision about how we want to go forward with Noah's treatment because if it's a grade 4 he's going to have no chance at a normal life and we totally freaked out but of course we just kept kept keeping keeping hope I guess because we knew he was really strong and that he can get through this and of course he did they repeated the test three days later and the bleed was the same it didn't get any bigger like the doctor said it would so we were really thankful for that and then his third week of life, they said the bleed might have gone down a, like a little tiny bit, but not enough for it to be categorized at, like, as like a grade one. And also on his third week of life, he started having like discoloration in his abdomen. His whole abdomen was purple, like dark purple. And they said they didn't see anything in like x-rays or ultrasounds that it could be like perforation of his intestines. So they didn't really do anything about it, but then it kept getting more purple and more purple and more purple. And 
by that time he was transferred to the other hospital that we're at right now but he wasn't transferred because of the purple abdomen he was transferred because he has an open duct in his heart and most babies are born with that well if they're preterm they're born with that because when they're in your womb that duct closes I think they said at like 36 weeks so yeah so he had an open duct and he had the purple abdomen when he was transferred to Children's Hospital Los Angeles and right away the first day he got there they put a drain in his abdomen to see if there was intestinal fluid or if it was just like extra blood and it turned out to be intestinal fluid which is really bad because when that leaks out into your abdomen it can cause like a severe infection and that's what ended up happening with him and the next day they had to go in and do a like a bowel resection I guess you could say yeah they they took out like about like five centimeters of a piece of his intestine that was the perforated part and they created a stoma so his poop can come out through the through the stoma on the outside of his stomach <coughs> and he started passing poop through there like a week about a week after that operation and they were really proud of that so they were able to put like a bag on top of it because enough was passing through and at week week five was like basically nothing was really happening they were just trying to keep him stable but they did change the oxygen machine he was on he didn't need as much pressure to his lungs so they went to a, like a less pressure one and this one that he's on right now the next step is the nasal cannula because right now he still has a tube so hopefully within the next like two, probably, I, I think within the next two weeks he'll get the tube out. Right now he's seven weeks, well he's going to be seven weeks Monday. So I think without, within the next like two weeks he should get the tube out. And yeah, that's kind of it for him. They started feeding him milk at six weeks when they felt his intestines were ready for it. And he's doing really good. I'll put some pictures. I'll try and put some videos like scattered around this video and so you guys can see how he's doing because he's a really strong little baby and of course the beginning was super hard because they just don't they really I really don't think the doctors know for sure what's gonna happen to him so you just have to like keep hoping because Noah's been so strong you guys like oh my gosh they gave him a pacifier one time and the nurse was like, oh, he's not going to be strong enough to suck on it, but we'll just we'll just put it in his mouth and see, and see if he likes it or not. And he started sucking on it. And she was like, oh, I didn't think he would do that. And I was like, yeah, because he's a strong little boy. And when they started feeding him milk, he gained like four ounces within five days. So now he's like two pounds, one ounce. And yeah, we have a really long journey ahead of us, of course. But... He's doing so good, so we just have to keep hoping every day for him. And I hope you guys keep up on our journey and see how our baby is doing. Because he's doing really well so far, sometimes. He has, he gives us some scares. He gives all the nurses some scares. But he's a super cute little guy. Sorry guys, Josh was calling, but... Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this update on Noah. I'll try doing these maybe once a week. Of course, check out our Instagrams. And our Instagrams are all, always down below in the description. And just stay tuned to our journey. Don't forget to subscribe down below and turn your post notifications on so you'll know when we post a video. And give this video a thumbs up. And thank you so much for watching. See you guys later.